my name is Josh, and today we are talking about Slother House. Yes, this movie is about as insane as it sounds and as you would imagine it, and I'm very excited to be talking about it. Slother House tells the story of a young girl who rescues a sloth and brings it back to her sorority house only to get a bloodbath in return. I love how crazy this movie is. This is easily one of the best B-movies that I have seen in the last 10 years, and I would say that this is one of the funniest comedies we've gotten this year, as well as one of the best horror comedies we've seen this year as well. And if you guys have seen this movie, it might be a, a strange connection to make, but this movie tonally reminds me of Twin Peaks. If you've seen Twin Peaks, then you know that when Mark Frost and David Lynch set out to tell a story of Laura Palmer, they wanted to do it in this kind of prime time satirical soap opera way where it was it it thrived on its overacting and absurdist humor. I think this movie does that in absolute spades. Like there are sequences in this movie that are very clearly supposed to be dramatic and they are just uh, overacted to the point of absolute hilarity. Make no mistake, Slaughter House isn't one of those movies where it's so bad it's good. Somewhere along the lines in the vein of The Room or Showgirls, this is a legitimately good movie. It blends its horror elements really well into its comedy, so you have a lot of gags, both in the sense of horror kills, but also in the sense of uh, comedic timing. I think the overacting here really plays into its charm. This movie uses it to its advantages, whereas if you find overacting in other films, sometimes it's really... It brings down the quality of the movie, whereas here it elevates it. And I say whether there, there are scenes that are overacted or that are just acted really well, the tone blends really well together. I love how this is a movie where the tone of the film itself is not very serious, it's very absurd, it's funny, it really lends into the almost slapstick nature of its concept. But the actors and the characters are bringing, like, real drama and real tension to this absurdist and obscene concept. I think this is really where the film shines because it's able to blend a lot of those horror elements and comedic elements really well. And much like a good joke of a stand-up comedian that is telling a story and eventually building to a punchline, I feel like that's kind of the same way that this movie handles its comedy. It's actually building itself up to this ginormous crescendo, whereas literally the second half of this movie feels like it is just a laugh every other minute. Outside of Joyride from this year, this is probably the only other movie that I've experienced that literally made me laugh to the point of almost crying. And the first half, as it's building to those, it's not to say that it's without the horror, it's not to say that it's without the slasher elements or the comedic elements. They're just very sparingly and mild as they are building to the kills, to the gags, and to the comedy. And I think that really works in the strength of its narrative. I think the pacing of this movie is immaculate. The movie never feels like it takes too long to set up the characters or introduce you to kind of the tension and the rivalry between uh, our main character Emily and her on-screen rival Brianna. This movie naturally builds up the sloth and the bloodlust and just kind of plants these like everything feels like really well thought out and really well constructed. Initially, I was going to say my one complaint was kind of how this movie felt like it ended and then it kind of kept going and then it ended, felt like it ended again, then kind of kept going. But every time that it would do that, as much as it, I hate it, that is one of my biggest pet peeves in film. There was always a payoff. And I think this might be the first film that I've seen in 
well over 10 years that actually has payoff to some of these kind of fake endings. I have one other thing that I want to say, but it does dive into spoiler territory, so let's run this through the Rorschach rating scale. I'm honestly going to go ahead and give Slother House a 4 out of 5. If you're a horror fan, if you love to laugh, this movie is made for you. It is easily, hands down, one of the weirdest, craziest movies that 2023 has given us. Whoever had this movie on your bingo card, thank you so much. This movie is highly entertaining and really is easily one of the best B movies I've ever seen, hands down. If you guys have seen Slother House, what did you guys think? Comment below and let me know, but let's talk about mental health. If you guys are new to our content, Mental Health Moment is where we take a theme of mental health out of the film which we're reviewing, discuss it for a few moments in the hopes to deconstruct the stigma surrounding mental health. In the beginning of this movie, we are introduced to our protagonist, Emily, and Emily has been in the sorority for three years, and her whole mission, essentially, in this movie is to be kind of end her senior year on a high note and to kind of become an influencer to those around her. And the things that we really kind of start to see throughout the course of the movie as her character is going on this journey is that she literally leaves behind everyone that really cares for her in the hopes for popularity. And honestly, I feel like that's kind of the world that we live in now. There's an endorphin high when we get a notification that somebody liked our photos or our status or retweeted us or liked our photo or, you know, whatever XYZ commented on so on and so forth or, or we get a DM or an email or a text message, you know, th that list goes on. But here's the question that I want to really ask and plague you tonight is one of the things that the film explores is kind of the mental health downfall of kind of chasing after those really shallow and really vain relationships and over the ones that actually really matter. Because at the end of the day, those likes, those retweets, those friend quote unquote friends that you have, unless they are willing to get down in the trenches with you, that's not the company that you need to be keeping or are worthy of. I think sometimes we have this tendency to cheapen ourselves as individuals in the hopes to be liked by other people. And that does a number on your mental health in the long run. And I'm saying that from experience. I spent half my teenage years and childhood, even into adulthood, hoping and constantly changing myself for crowds around me in hopes to be liked, validated, and looked upon. Now, don't get me wrong, I had a great community of people that were like brothers and sisters to me, but the people that I was seeking validation from, instead of actually having meaningful relationships, I had depression, I had anxiety, I had suicidal thoughts, and that list really just goes on. Value those that are around you, value those that are going to willingly step down and get into the mud and trenches with you because those are the relationships that are going to matter and those are the relationships that are going to truly impact your mental health for the better. And if you or someone you know is struggling with suicide, addiction, self-harm, or depression, please click the links in our show notes below to check out our mental health resource library because this is the reason why we do what we do here at Victims of Villains. It's to remind you that you have value, that you have worth, and at the end of the day that you are loved and cared for. On that note, in the show notes below, you guys will also find links to more of our content, including podcasts from our podcast network, more movie reviews like this, our Patreon, links to our social media, that subscribe button as well. And of course, uh, you guys can check out Slother House as it makes its deep, as it makes its run. I don't know. This, the theatrical run for this thing is kind of strange. But it's out now from Gravitas Ventures. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button below and have a great night.